Hi, I'm Steve and this is my Mark 1 full console. This is the first of three videos of me fitting this axle. And I reconditioned this axle over 10 years ago. And in M days, I wasn't taking any videos, but I was taking a lot of photos. So the beginning of this video is me just talking about these photos and what I found when I removed the diff inside the casing, there was a surprise. Uh, I will then be fitting the poly bushes to the leaf sprigs. Then in part two, I'll be fitting the leaf springs to the axle and then fitting the whole unit onto the car. And then I will be showing some footage that I took back in February of when I relined the brake shoes. I did it myself. And then finally, in part three, I will be removing the, the drums, removing the old um, brake shoes and inspecting the rubbers in the brake cylinders and then fitting the new brake shoes on. These pictures were taken about 2009 or just before um, when I decided to do the underbody. Here I'm removing that flange so I can put a new seal in there. And the first thing I noticed when I took the diff off was bruise marks. There was quite a few round, around the diameter there. That was easily fixed by getting a fine file and then finishing off with this stone very fine stone. Then I shone a torch inside the axle and looked up the where the wheel is, the, up that end, and uh, I could see that protruding on the inside. And it corresponds to the inside of that butt weld. And they do that by friction, I think. And obviously there's a big burr under there. I carried on cleaning it out and uh, cleaned it with paraffin, got it all nice and clean, and then had a good look and there were still some bits left. There was bits trapped underneath there, underneath that joint there. Um, I don't know what they are, and I might probably weld in, weld in slag or something, I don't know. But luckily, the actual diff gears were okay. Um, and it all turns nice and smoothly, there's not a scratch on them gears, they're perfect. So I then went ahead and uh, reconditioned the whole axle. I then took the leaf springs apart because they were very rusty and dead dry. When I got them both apart, this was the only pad in there that was uh, intact, all the rest are, are disintegrated and, uh, and perished. I went ahead and cleaned all the leaf springs with this old flat wool, and they came out very nice. A couple of the springs had these wear marks on them, and it wasn't too deep, and I was able to file it and then polish it out and without weakening the end of that spring. The guy on the press that day must have had too many beers the night before. Don't know how that happened. So then I decided to make some nylon pads. So I don't know if this is going to work out well, but uh, I can only tell when I drive it. And I stuck it in with silicon sealer. This happens to be fish tank silicon sealer. I then clamped them all together and gave them a coat of this super enamel just to make them black and it's a matte black finish. I then loaded all the springs up the whole length with this sparing grease and then lined them all up with this drill and clamped them together. And this was the end result after I put the original bolt back. 
Okay, I'm preparing to put the axle back on now. So the first thing I'm doing is making sure all these threads are nice and loose because they will give a torque setting on a lot of the screws and if the nut is really tight on here without anything clamping then that means that the actual torque you do it up to is going to be less than the torque wrench says because it's tight to do the nut up so I've got a 716 UNF die and I went down all the threads put some oil on them and they're all nice and free and these are the same I just put some oil on these I can't see any torque settings for these but I just have to use my experience for that now these ones this is where the front of the leaf spring come, comes up to there with the with the rubber the poly bushes go in here and they go on that and it's a funny arrangement a lot of you would have seen this a lot of these get damaged I've seen pictures of these holes being elongated and I think what happens is it's difficult when you're under the car to line it all up so you put the bushes on the spring and then you put this in and it's difficult to actually line up because there is a shoulder I think you can see it. it's a shoulder that that shoulder there locates in, in into this hole here's a better view of the end of that pin and a thread is 516 UNF and the diameter of the shoulder part is 0.360 now what I've done is I've left the paint on these on purpose and I've left the paint in the holes on purpose you could put Loctite around here to make it tight uh, because you want both of these holes to be tight so you line it up so there's an equal gap all around that 5 16th thread and then just tap it in can't do this too many times it's going to make it loose so you know you don't want any play in here and you don't want any play in here and when you do the nut up it tightens the pin onto the onto the bracket and there's nothing this side to stop it going in and out I've got all the parts together now and cleaned out all the threads on the, on the bolts ready to go I've got these super flex poly bushes and it came with these rubber insulators that insulates the leaf spring from the axle and that, that one bag came with that sachet of silicon grease I have read a couple of months ago on on Facebook that you need to use a lot of this grease to stop the bushes squeaking in the future so there's not I don't think there's enough there but it's not a problem because I've got a tub of silicon grease there and I've got a bottle of silicon gel that I used to use on a treadmill
what I found with these was the, these rubbers seem very tight and there's a difference on these metal plates so that one's that one's not flat there so obviously that one was originally on the bottom of the spring this one is flat so it was on the top of the spring and really that was the only way I could get them to fit and they are very tight so what I've done with the other side is I've clamped it and let it let it sit for a while like that clamp that on like that and then just squash it as best I could but I might have trouble and it's going okay that's in that's all it's all in so these rubbers are co very, very good they are correct because you don't want it loose it's better to be tight than loose so now I've got to attach these to the axle.